Knowledge is power, and this is powerful stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with your host, Jen Solis. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. The phone lines are open at 731-1230. That's 731-1230 or toll-free. Toll-free. 1-866-820-5528. That's 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's bring on the host. Here is Jen Solis. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Bad Cannabis News Hour. Uh, to my right, I have Kurt Dukoc, Raymond Fletcher, and William Beach Baker. This is the news from Nevada and beyond. All right, directly into the news, we'll start talking about Henderson and what they've got going on. Henderson had a mad rush at the last minute with 28 applicants uh, filled on the last day. Isn't this kind of like a, a repeat of what happened at Clark County? A little bit, uh, but the difference is not nearly as many people due to the, the restricted number of licensing and the excessive fees that Henderson was throwing on top there. Well, you know, and the excessive, the not only the excessive fees that they were throwing on, on there, but some of these people have applied now twice because they've applied in Clark County, and now they're going for a uh, an application in Henderson. So if they've, if they've been denied twice, they could be out some significant fees um, for this. Yeah, but you got to figure they also, they probably probably spent upwards of a hundred, hundreds of thousands of dollars putting this application together. If they were declined by the county, it's a simple switch just to change your location and apply in another another thing. It's just the additional, you know, application fee at that point. Well, 11 of these people actually opted to try this a second time. Um, they're, they're the applicants that weren't ch- chosen for Clark County. Um, so 11 of these 28 were, were repeats. Some of those repeats include uh, the Greenspun family. Uh, we have um, Lou Ruvio, uh, Camille Ruvio, the, the wife of Lou, uh, Larry Ruvio, the philanthropist and senior managing director of Southern Wine and Spirits. Uh, let's see. We have Michael Abbott, an out-of-state in, in banking investor. Uh, let's see. Well, Greenspun's group in Clark County was not chosen for a dispensary from um, in June, but they were approved for a cultivation facility and a production facility. Um, they, so they were out of one of 11 applicants who applied twice. Hmm. What do you got to say, Kurt? <laughs> well, you know, there, there's, I have a feeling that a lot of these applicants, in, if they get turned down in, in Henderson, will probably be applying in the city tomorrow because tomorrow is the headline of the city applications and uh, possibly, you know, even up in North Las Vegas. That's that's kind of that's kind of what I'm thinking on this. Um, Henderson's reviewing the process. The count is reversing the process. The county used sending all preliminary suitable applications up to the state, and then they'll conduct a blind review with the names removed, and then rank the best qualified applications. The f- top five applications will then go before Henderson City Council for final approval. So Henderson is in the game. Here last week, we had nobody applying. We thought nobody really was going to apply. And then on the last day, the mad rush happened. So that's kind of a repeat of what's going on in Clark County. Mm -hmm. Um, Some more on local news. Um, We have Hawaiian Brian in the studio today. Hey. hey. (laughs) Thanks. And um, he's he's going to be talking about restarting Las Vegas normal. Yes, yes, Hawaiian Brian here, Hemp Vision TV, Las Vegas Normal. Woohoo! We are only, what, eight days old. Eight days? Te- technically, we're eight days old. Wow. Las Vegas Normal is eight days old. Uh, we had a lot of inquiries about us. That's great. It was <laughs> it was awesome. Uh, we had a lot of clarifications we had to make make because uh, there was a lo- old Las Vegas Normal. Yep. So people will sort of getting mixed up so we just want to tell everybody this is a new las vegas normal yep new board of directors new management new executive committee everything that's great that's great so who are some of the faces on your board of directors executive well, committee if you could share that with one us. of them is me the other person is reiko awesome uh, 
I'm sure you all know Reiko. She performs at Weekend all the time. Yes, She's she also does. Part Big of the supporter. Weekend family. Yes, she Big is. Big supporters of Weekend. We also have her uh, art, Duran. Oh, yeah. Why, our other guy, Warren, and Eric uh, Moreno. All from Las Vegas. All Las Vegas locals. That's so great. I am so happy that, that Normal is restarting and in not only not only friends' hands, but people that I know that are soldiers, the capable workers, and we'll just keep it going and thriving and, and growing our community. Oh, no, and we're looking forward to working with We Can 702. Mm -hmm. For sure. You know, because we've been pretty much like cousins or brother sister relationship with these guys it's like it for so many years and and it's it's good that we're finally getting to sit down especially as far as hemp vision tv and we're going to start focusing a lot here on the local area here in las vegas in our own hometown i'm so i'm so happy and relieved that that you guys are starting this and that hemp vision tv is coming on board fully in las vegas uh you know i've been waiting for a minute for this <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of people have been telling me that. In fact, we, we get a lot of people, they, they actually think we're from California, like San Francisco, L.A., and when I meet them here at the Champ Show, like local, they had no idea we were local. They thought we were from Denver. They thought we were everywhere because we're all over the place, wherever the... Wherever the, 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 wherever, thing, the, the scene, wherever the scene's <laughs> happening, we try to be there. We try to cover the scene, and we're glad that the scene is now going to be here in Las Vegas, and we're going to be sharing with the rest of the world. So we're, we're going to show that to the rest of the world what Las Vegas has to offer with Weekend 702 on the Las Vegas Normal. So big, a big congratulations to all of you there at, at Normal and Las you, Vegas thank you. Normal. And you know what? You guys have a website, isn't it? Uh, yes, we do have a website. The website is lasvegasnormal.com. Uh, any inquiries, we also have a Facebook, and you can reach us at staff at lasvegasnormal.com. So the town is really exploding, Brian. What do you think? All this, this hip fest, this oh, freaking we're, we're, normal. We're, we are excited. Um, we've got a lot of plans. Uh, we've got a lot of visions. we got a lot of plans. We'll call them hemp visions for now. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but Vegas is looking awesome, and we're proud to be a part of the local industry. And, and what, I, what I tell everybody is we are not just local. We're worldwide. You That's know, right. Like Vegas is international. So look out for us on the map on the other side of the world. Whether you're looking for us on Hemp Vision TV, on Weekend, we're going to be all over the place. You know what? My uh, treasurer has been in the Philippines for the past two months. He's been sending me news from Philippines uh, yes. about their legalization process. Um, HB, HB 447, House Bill 447, is uh, I'm also recently returned from the Philippines <laughs> several months ago. Mm -hmm. And the scene there is very positive as far as medical marijuana is concerned. Um, I thought they were going recreation when I first went over there, and I found out they were going straight medical they have a lot of patients they're ready to to for medical marijuana and they currently have a bill in place right now called house bill 4477 which we're trying to push right now in the philippines with a lot of our friends from the philippines such as the philippine cannabis association uh, monster bud philippines and a whole bunch of other uh, groups from the philippines that we're trying to push locally out there so we're not just concentrating on las vegas we're trying to do things worldwide like i said we're worldwide that's right worldwide love and you know and we appreciate you guys' efforts for thank sure thank you very much right. for sure do you guys have anything uh coming up besides hemp fest are we are we are we doing anything we're actually we're well, doing what, the pride the the party this saturday that's what i was just gonna that's say right. we got the big party where our friends at weekend are celebrating with their six year six year six year anniversary pool party make sure you guys all come down there uh hemp vision tv is going to be in the house las mm -hmm. vegas normal uh <laughs> Lady, Lady Reiko will be Rico. jamming as usual. Don't forget, Lady Reiko is the number one female uh, vocalist in Hawaii. What? Yeah, no joke. She Man. is in, in Kama Aina magazine. She is the number one female vocalist. So she couldn't be here. I had to fill in for her today. She was booked over at, at another show. So that's how much she is in demand. So she sings for um, special occasions. Like we can 702. Thank you so much. That lady is on fire, man. No, yeah. She is no, she's she's spreading. Well, that's why I'm, I'm, we're, we're lucky to have her on our, on our board of directors. So <laughs> as, as, as my vice president and, and deputy director, she's, she's the, the girl for the job. She is. She is like. She is like a tornado. Well, now for more local news, uh, you can chime in, Brian, anytime you like, or or you can uh, check out. <laughs> we are going to talk about um, the rural Nevada mesquite. Mesquite makes a late push for uh, marijuana business in the eleventh hour. 
Um, Mesquite is moving full steam ahead with medical marijuana. So time's running out quickly and Mesquite officials think that they need to act fast if they want in. And that's the truth. That is the truth. Originally, the city council voted to hold off the decision and now the council members are having second thoughts. You know what? I mean, it's you get it in the news, you get the excitement going and then suddenly people think they're missing out on some money and everybody jumps on board. Mm -hmm. um, Mesquite is about 75 miles northeast of Las Vegas. It's one of the last towns that you can uh, go through before you get to Utah. And so it may be a really good place for uh, people to come in and get their meds from Utah. You know, I don't bring it back across the line, though. Be careful. Oh, in trouble. Don't cross <laughs> the do line. That. Don't cross the line. No. So their city manager, Andy Barton, says that the grow operation could bring about 100 jobs to the city of 1,700. So it looks like they're only going to go after like a couple of grows with only 100 jobs in a city of 1,700. <laughs> Um, they're gonna. There's going to be at least one grow oper uh, uh, operation. There's probably going to be one dispensary and maybe a production facility. Maybe not. Well, that's really all they need for that small little town, considering that Utah on the border is not a medical state either. So. Oh yes, it is. Oh, CBD. Not only that, but look at the number. Hi, Jen. Hi, <laughs> Not only that, but look at the number of uh, medical marijuana patients we have in the valley. We don't even have five. Thousand, I believe, not yet in the Just county of Clark. Now. Six thousand three hundred. Oh. That's for the entire state. For the entire state. Uh, out registered, of, registered. Yeah, that's that's registered. a that's a great good great point. <laughs> that is a great point because there are those that are afraid to have their name on any kind of government list Definitely. or anything. Definitely. <laughs> like they're not on any I lists know, and, already. You know, I know <laughs> there are there are a lot of them, and a lot of them come from California already. For sure. You know that are, that are transient in between uh las vegas and los angeles there there are people that live here actually there's mm -hmm. true and if you can get your 40 your your card for like 40 bucks in la oh, or yeah. 400 here you know you know where people are going to get their four, card is it 400 here right now you know what it's about a hundred dollars for just the paperwork but after the doctors the fingerprinting okay. and the uh yeah, you did the uh, DMV. Thank you. The DMV thing. That's the thing that floored me. Was, 22 bucks? No, it's it like was only 12, 12. I think. Oh, but okay. still, you 12. know, it's like they send you your letter. They say, hey, you're approved. Mm -hmm. You know, and then they send you something else, which you got to take to the DMV. Then you got to wait nearly two weeks to get your card. Yep. That's true. Where in California, in some places, you can just walk in and get it right there that same day. Yeah, they give you the recommendation, and you walk right out within minutes. That's probably about 30, 45 minute process. Yeah, they had brought this up at, in the legislation uh, and up in legislature last session, and uh, part of, part of the reason they didn't they didn't want it like California, where you walk in and walk out with medication, because they felt that kind of cheapened the program. But I do know because of the new council that's meeting now that they are working very hard on trying to shorten that process to get your app uh, to get your card now. That's true. And you know what? The hypocrisy of that whole statement walking in and then walking out with meds, it just floors me. If these people are sick, you walk into your doctor, how many times do you get samples at your doctor and they send you away oh, with meds? All the meds? time, all the time. You just took the words out of my mouth, you know. And then <laughs> seriously because in Las Vegas regulations, you can't, if you're a patient, you know, and you come in and you don't know what strain works best for you, or you don't know what your actual needs are, I can't sit there and quote unquote consult with you or give you a sample of strain A versus strain B and say, okay, according to Leafly, this will work on this issue of yours, and then this one will work on this issue. We don't have that ability to do that yet, and until our legislators realize that this is medication it's not a drug you know and and i've said it before and i'll continue to say it you don't hear people saying medical medical xanax medical vicodin medical tylenol or anything like that you should be able to go to your doctor get your stuff and go medicate i think i think that that's absolutely true if if you walk in and you're in pain and you're you know and you need the medicine there's no reason that you shouldn't be able to walk into the doctor get the recommendation walk out and get meds here um it's that's going to have to change um because our patients will suffer while the people that have reciprocity will just be able to walk in and get their meds yeah, definitely why would why would they come in and get a license legally with the state of Nevada when they can 
come in with one from out of state for $35, $40 and walk right in straight to the dispensary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, if they can't, if they can't just get their meds very easily here, you know, it's, it, I've had people tell me that they would, uh, okay, we, at we can, we pay for people's cards that, that can't afford their cards. Uh, we do have a process and we do have a program for this. But I've had people say, hey, can't you just give me the check and I'll go spend the 40 bucks and, and get it in, in XYZ state and, you know, or California and I'll come back and then I can use the rest on groceries. And how am I, I'm, that's kind of hard to argue with except for, hey, the gas in Cali costs a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, and, and you just touched on a really good point and I think that we should... Um, we should in the future focus a segment on insurance because people are making the choice between their medication and groceries every day. Mm-hmm. That's true. Wow, that's sad. That is that is really sad. And so we're just we're trying to um, we're trying to streamline the process. Our next legislative meeting uh, is on August fifteenth, and that's at the Grant Sawyer Building. And we'll announce it a couple times before then. But I encourage everybody to show up and have your suggestions, um, you know, and even write them down and send them ahead of time. Uh, even after you give testimony, write them down, send them in, also so that uh, the lawmakers can uh, can get kind of a synopsis of what you talked about. Um, you know, the only way that, that you're going to be ignored in the process is that if you don't if you don't make some kind of statement. You know, if you don't stand up, then then uh, how are you going to say I tried? Or you know, they, these people don't help me unless you try. Definitely, as a community, we all need to stand together, as you know, in support like we can and all the other events, and to sh- and to show the people that we support it. You know, it's it's a number one topic right now. We were do- we've been doing this media for so many years it's only now recently that people are really coming out on camera and being more vocal about it so it's 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 a turn of a a new age right now that we're having right now so it's actually pretty good it it really it really is and you know and part of it i think that part of it is due to some of these people coming in from california and going hey this is how it is in california and we're going wait wait we're scared well no not anymore no we're not scared we're nevada (laughs) Yeah, Nevada, not Nevada, by the way. Nevada. If you're, if you're, if you're uh, going to make a presentation to the legislature, please, please pronounce the state right. Thank you. <laughs> do they, and, and, they, and they make a big deal of that or something? Oh, yes, they do. Oh, they if do. you go up there and say what Nevada, is a, what is a they proper, will you What is the proper <laughs> Nevada. Nevada? Nevada. Nevada. Okay, yeah. that's that's how I say it anyway. Just like people <laughs> say Illinois, uh, they pronounce the S at the end instead of saying Illinois. There's no S at the end? Well, there is an S, but you don't pronounce it. All right. Okay. So, I it, it. <laughs> so yes and, and uh, just uh to um dovetail on what she said jen you know um when you do provide testimony what my recommendation would be is if you write up your testimony you want to make sure you send that to the chair of that committee Which first and foremost right and then when you're giving your comments just give a brief synopsis don't read your whole thing because you're submitting it to them to read at their leisure and more than likely and and i'm not speaking for tick you know i i know tick tick is an awesome guy he is and tick ticks on it he really is and i wish nearly every legislator that we had up there was just like that because he he's always on it he, I, I'll have to say, I've emailed him several different times, even during the weekend, and I usually get an email back within an hour or an hour and a half, something yeah, like that's that. Pretty that's pretty good. It's really, really good. Um, well, right now we're going to go on a break, and we'll be back with our 420 moment. Finally, Nevada medical marijuana dispensaries are opening, but you must have your medical marijuana card to get inside. Call the friendly team at Karma Holistic Health Foundation, toll free, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Karma Holistic Health Foundation will give you legal access to medical marijuana. All veterans receive a discount, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. 
Locally owned and operated TSI Total Safety Incorporated has kept our community safe since 1998. We provide superior services offering professional installation, local fire and burglar alarm monitoring, and the fastest response times in Las Vegas. We also offer armed and unarmed security, video security systems, access control, and fire safety installation and service. All of your security needs are covered. Call us at 702-967-0000. That's 702-967-0000. Or visit us at tsivegas.com. Do you need help getting your Nevada medical marijuana card? Dr. Reefer is now accepting new patients. There are no medical records required. We have a doctor on staff to give you a thorough physical examination. There is a 99% approval rate for patients. They also have a money-back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Free consultation is available. Call 702-428-0000. 702-428-0000. To get your Nevada Medical Marijuana card today. Welcome back. And our Weekend 420 moment is actually on us. Uh, Weekend 702. It's our sixth anniversary party, and we are a 501c3 public charity for education in Nevada. We just got uh, our 501c3 designation last year, and so everybody uh, that is given to us, you can ask for a receipt and take it off on your taxes 100%. That's right. All the all the fine people who took care of us at Champs, we want to thank you all. It was it was a great week, and we, we got lots of great stuff. Um, I've so you know what that means i've spent the last two days sending out thank you emails and starting to you know push people on on our facebook page so so you know what that means all our great sponsors mean that we got lots of great raffle prizes i can't wait <laughs> oh my god you should see some of those pieces they donated Just, when beautiful. i heard that bubbler going in the beginning i was like oh where's it at <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, more than just our parties, we do have uh, patients first meetings and these are so that you can connect to other patients in the community. We also are, have public outreach at First Friday where we talk about our group, talk about the laws, talk about anything that's going on. I think we've also had people uh, registering other people to vote. Also, we've had people out there um, with petitions for legalization. So if, if you are a medical marijuana related or, or marijuana related um, community activist, you can coordinate with us and come on out to our booth. Uh, we welcome more than just we can. And if you have a suggestion, of course, just, you know, give it to us or send it to us. We'd like to talk also about some of our great leaders and activists who've helped us over the six years. Um, Hawaiian Brian, who's been with us since the beginning as, you know, a supporter. All over the place. <laughs> All over the place. Um, Lee Kalinsky, he's our treasurer. Michael McCulloch. Um, he's, he's unfortunately been asked to step down due to the due the, order. Well, you know. <laughs> The, the feds ain't got nothing on us. Uh, William Beach Baker, Kurt Dukoch, Bruce Gale, Perry Haichu, Raymond Fletcher, Jason Sturtzman, Dan Rush, Vicki Higgins, uh, Cindy Brown, and Julesy Kilowatt, who now has a show on, I think, Weed TV, Ask Nurse Julesy, something like that. So all of our great activists and core people who we've started with have kind of been branching out, doing their own things, making stuff happen. And I'm so proud to be part That's of awesome. this activist group here in Nevada. And that not only can we just focus on we can and patients too, that, that there's just so much happening that we're having to branch out and... and uh, and spread the love as it, as it were. Kurt, have you got something? Yeah, uh, yeah. our party is on this Saturday, the 26th, and it goes from uh, 4 o'clock till 10 o'clock. We have great music. Lady Rako is going to be there. Woo -woo. Coconut and the Clue and the Mass Distractors, I believe, are going to make a visit in there also. Um, there's a humongous pool, so bring your swimsuit and a towel. Um, it, is, uh, it is a BYOB's event. Uh, so, you know, uh, there's no glass because of the pool. And if you're one of the people that uh, we can has helped get your, your card in this last year, uh, you're considered a, a, a voluntary member. So come on in and your, your entry is free. You're on the, you're on the list at the door. So, so be our guest. If, if, yeah, be if, our guest. If, you, if we've helped you in the past um, to get your card, just consider yourself a guest. If you volunteered for us regularly at activities, consider yourself a guest. We're not only thanking us, we're thanking our volunteers and members who've meant so much to us over the years. 
So and a big thank you and we tw- uh, and 420 salute. And for, for everyone else, the entry fee to this party is uh, $15. Um, we'll be also selling raffle tickets. And remember, all of the proceeds from this, anything that we make on this, goes right back into our patients program and, and goes to help somebody who can't afford to get a card get a card. So, you know, don't be shy just because it's $15. You're, you're having fun and helping people at the same time. And that's got to feel good. And cards aren't cheap in Nevada. No, they're not. <laughs> so. so congratulations to We Can 702 as our 420 Yay. group person Yay. of the week. Yay. <laughs> so Woo-hoo. we did have a little bit more local news to cover um, last Wednesday after after the day after our last radio show. North Las Vegas went ahead and uh, they, uh, they okayed a second medical marijuana ordinance unanimously adopting business licensing and rules introduced earlier in the month. So it was kind of one of those. Anticlimactic. Yeah, and yeah, it was just like, okay, <laughs> we're going through with this. And, you know, and the part of the reason it was so anticlimactic is because everyone is really agreeing with what they're doing. Nobody's, you know, nobody's, you know, bucking in their system. <laughs> <laughs> they're doing they're, a really they're, good they're not job. Not throwing up any more walls. No, no. not at all. No, they're no doing more a very, resistance. That's awesome. Yeah, they're actually they're actually adding incentives for people to come out there. If you want to you want to put like a grow or a manufacturing out in the apex area, you only have to pay a one time thirty thousand dollar origination fee. Um, which you know, which compared to anywhere else in the city, it's every year you pay that fee. So they're making That's it to where cheap. yeah, and plus you don't have to go through a, a special use permit. You can go through a regular standard business license and this is in there. north north las vegas, north las vegas yeah apex out, out area apex wow area. No, that's you, awesome you know it's cheap you won't have any road you don't have any water you don't have any power <laughs> there's nothing you out. have not you gotta build you it have nothing <laughs> you but build it they will come yes they will <laughs> Other hey, you put some pot plants out there, people will go out there. Cannabis. <laughs> oh, cannabis. cannabis. Medicine. Exactly. And then we had some news coming out of Pahrump, and then we'll uh, get to a little more from uh, the casino end. So Pahrump, basically, they they had um, an approval on all but six applications for um, cultivation uh, were approved, and one of the six I saw that wasn't approved was right it was in a residential section it was zoned wrong uh, so they came into it kind of wrong um, I, I didn't really see the others that were not approved because you know I, I didn't stay around for that long it was so long um, but you know Pahrump is on track and, and going uh, there's one dispensary out in Nye County and if you guys are aware Nye County goes way up to Tonopah and all the way over to Pahrump and then down below us just a little bit. It's a huge county compared to Clark County and they get one dispensary and the whole thing, but they do have delivery services. <laughs> it may be a cost prohibitive because it'd be like, I, I need some gas money too. <laughs> Minimum $100. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Donation. May, yeah. Maybe may, may a minimum delivery. Okay, uh, medical marijuana and casino interests continue to mix. Oh my goodness! You know, they they there's a special use permit, and it's very similar to getting uh getting a gaming license. Very you know very cost prohibitive for a lot of people. A lot of paperwork. You got to you know talk about where your grandma was born. You got to tell your brothers and your sisters. In laws. In laws. Are the are the hotels outlaws. open to it already or? Are they accepting it? I mean, what, 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 what's what's well, their stance? The, what's the stance on most of them right now? It's the gaming much- commission came in and said anybody who applies into this, if they get a license, that they are going to take their gaming licenses away from them. And that happened one with one of the slot operators. Is someone was opening up a new restaurant and was going to pick a slot operator, and the gaming commission strongly encouraged them to select hmm. somebody else. Wow. But see, they weren't the only ones. You have Herps Gaming. Oh, I'm sorry, the Herps Grandchildren Trust that are involved. Yeah. And Henderson, you got the guy from, I think it's Tropicana. That's like a brother or PR marketing. Now, the Gaming Commission came down and said there wasn't enough degree of separation between husband and wife. Do you think between father and son is they're going to agree or disagree on that one? I don't know. I'm interested in finding out that one because uh, I, I heard some rumors in uh, Henderson that uh, that Rory Reed, one of the Reeds, was was on board for that. Um, 
But, you know, those were just rumors that I heard. And you know how rumors be flying in Vegas these days. Oh, oh my goodness. all over the place. Faster than the cash and <laughs> the <laughs> ball on that little spinny wheel. <laughs> the roulette. The roulette ball. The roulette. All right. We're going to now move on to uh, regional news. Um well, the beach is tapping on me. We ha we have a stop that happened uh, right outside the dash cam for Nevada Highway Patrol um, right near Mawapa caught a speeder. In the stop for speeding, they discovered uh, the smell or aroma of marijuana and they searched this guy's car. And even though this person was a medical marijuana patient, um, they searched the car. They found up fifty-three thousand dollars in cash, but less than three ounces of pot. Um, it this is just this is just kind of crazy. I, I actually got my car searched because because uh, they smelled they smelled marijuana in the car. It was two plants and a quarter ounce but you know it, i was under my limit because they all have roots on them <laughs> yeah they searched my car i had a whole bunch of donuts in there and it was they over. were your friends yeah it was over <laughs> they stopped at the do yeah. at the donut box i had huh? to give it up but the joke goes the cop pulled him over and he goes your eyes look red have you been smoking pot and the guy looks at him and goes your eyes look glazed you've been eating donuts <laughs> <laughs> Well, the, the reason this is so important about the smell of medical marijuana is because um, last week in Boston, Massachusetts, the Supreme Court said that the police may not use the smell of pot in itself to justify a search. I'm hoping that Nevada will go the same way. The court noted that the legislature decriminalization for possession of small amounts of marijuana and said that the police should focus their attention elsewhere. And so that was uh, that was last last month or last week in Massachusetts, and I think that I think that Las Vegas should probably or Nevada should probably follow suit in this. I know when I got my car searched and they didn't find anything, I said I'm a, one of my first arguments was I'm a legal medical cannabis patient, and he said, "Well, I smell I smell pot. I'm going to search your car." I said, "You have no probable cause." And he said to me, the smell is probable cause enough. And then he found the two plants and he said, do you have any more? And I said, yeah, I have this quarter ounce here. And, uh, and then he started rifling through my gym bag and my dirty chonies was in there. And I was like, I was like, I was like, wait, what are you doing? And he goes, well, I'm searching your bag. And I said, no, you're just rifling through my crap now. I said, <laughs> and he stopped. And I and he's like he's and then he's just like well why are you uh, you know pose this I'm like I got dirty clothes in there that's my gym bag okay and he stopped and so and then they let me go yeah I know <laughs> how they you take are your about your no and they oh. didn't take my chonies either okay. <laughs> yeah I know how you are about your gym bag you accidentally brought that into champs that was funny <laughs> rural Nevadans opt out of medical marijuana. Much of urban Nevada is quickly moving forward to licensed medical marijuana dispensaries, but patients in rural areas might find it difficult to obtain their medicine because local governments are opting out. Now, I'm pretty sure these same local governments are not opting out of alcohol, but that's just me. Another barrier to getting the medication is the apparent lack of interest by entrepreneurs to operate in the sparsely populated areas. They don't see enough money there. There's not enough traffic. And unfortunately, that's what it is, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, it's not because of the patients. It's because of the traffic. But the good thing is, is that all of those patients will retain their right to grow, right? It's within 25 miles from a dispensary. They're going to be able to grow up there. So this may be a haven for some people who are just, who are just, just like, you know what? I don't even want to deal with it here in Vegas. I'm just going to move out to the country and grow my weed and be happy. 26 miles. Rural like <laughs> 26 miles. 26 miles. <laughs> so, um, I got some news out of L.A. Uh, the medical uh, marijuana farmer's market was ordered to shut down. Now, didn't you report on this a couple weeks ago? Uh, yeah, Raymond? yeah. Well, was... Yes, I did. Well, they were forced to shut down. What about that? That's crazy. 
Yeah, uh, a farmer's market for medical marijuana users has been temporarily shut down after the L.A. County Superior Court judge agreed to halt operation of the Boyle Heights Cannabis Marketplace. The judge's ruling Tuesday grants a temporary restraining order, order filed by Los Angeles City Attorney Mike Fuhrer, who sought to stop the California Heritage operations because he said it doesn't comply with the city's law for medical m- marijuana dispensaries. So basically what they were doing is that the farmer's market was seeking an application and then getting a bunch of local growers who didn't have uh, who didn't have um, legal right to grow that much or to dispense to go underneath that umbrella. And that was ruled that it was not uh, that it was not kosher. Mm -hmm. And there's a hearing scheduled on August 6th to determine whether the market will be permanently closed. So anybody out there in L.A., uh, I would, I would advise going to that hearing and, uh, you know, speaking your voice. Yeah. Speaking of hearings. All if, right. If you are a Nevada resident and you do grow your own medicine, electric rates are going to be going up. Oh, no. Yes. Again? Again. There is a consumer session today at 9075 West Diablo Drive, Suite 250 at 6 o'clock. There's also another one on august 19th at the same location at 1 p.m and 6 p.m i'm going personally just because i've been double billed on on this and you know a cannabis patient you know is doing all they can to save their income and grow their medication and have access to it so we we you need to realize what's going on in your community every little thing really does affect us Mm-hmm. Yeah, it really does. And you know, if you're growing uh, in the summer, your bill jumps up to like three times, four times the amount, uh, unless you're using LEDs. But you know, I don't use LEDs. Did they give any reason why they're jacking up the prices on the electricity? Because um, they can. <laughs> basically, yeah. Because uh, they can. Greed. Warren Buffett bought NV Energy. We saw what happened when it was in Oregon with their rates. That's true. Warren Buffett came in here and bought it like what, like six? a year ago or more Uh and and now and he promised not to jack up the rates didn't he at that time when he bought it he said he would try to oh he would try to keep the rates well there was there was a rate decrease shortly after he took it over you got to give him credit for that it was it averaged out i think 27 cents per person per bill yeah no no per per person per 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 bill yeah per residence so yeah, so so I, I count the you per could kilowatts. Almost buy, you could almost <laughs> buy a third of a cup of coffee with what he gave us back. <laughs> that is fantastic. And speaking of Oregon, did Jerry mention that uh, Oregon has acquired enough signatures to get their ballot initiative? No, I did not mention that Oregon has uh, acquired enough signatures. Do you have the Do you have the story there, Ray? I may not, but <laughs> I have more on Oregon. It's what Oregon can. Or is it Oregon or Oregon? <laughs> Make sure you know before you address council. Right. Can, well, they can I learn. They got cheap weed up in Oregon. Really? Yo, is cheap. it any good, though? It's pretty good. Uh, the ones I saw is, I wish we had those prices. <laughs> I won't mention any prices out here, but. Yeah. Hey, no, there's, there's a difference between cheap and good. <laughs> but <we're laughs> yeah, That's true. Oregon can learn from Washington. Medical Mar- Marijuana legisla- uh, Legalization. Soaring prices, supply shortages, and overwhelmed regulators are three takeaways from Washington's rollout of its retail marijuana system that Oregon advocates hope to improve should the state legalize the drug come November. The excise tax will be according to the amount that's sold, according to one the chief petitioner, you will pay a dollar twenty-five per gram in taxes, whether the price of a gram is ten dollars or a hundred dollars. We feel we have a more stable tax, and that's important. So a dollar twenty-five a gram, so it's going to be about thirty some dollars a zip. It's like five, for an ounce, five percent, uh, about five percent. Right? It's about five percent tax. Yeah, $30. Well, well, roughly, but I mean, the good thing is um, it's it's per the gram, not not what the cost of. So if you're getting a gram at $5 or a gram at $500. It's per weight. You're, you're weight. still paying one a dollar twenty five per gram. And I think that that's something that other states should look at. Definitely, definitely. Just keeping the keeping yeah, the taxes down for, for the patients. Um, 
for the patients. That's a good right. thing. And another story here. We got Washington State says marijuana brownies are okay. <laughs> I say marijuana brownies are okay, too. I concur. <laughs> exactly. Yet there's a kid going to jail for marijuana brownies. Yeah, wasn't Texas. it like in Texas? Yeah. yeah. That was yeah don't mess around with them in yeah. Texas. Hey, but Texas. it was a kid in school. He took it to his school. There's a difference. Oh, uh, okay. Still, doesn't, yeah. still the, amount, the amount of time is hard to justify, exactly. I think, when you're trying to get a kid. Sort of I did lot. way worse than that when I was in high school. And <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have to go to jail. <laughs> so, but anyway, in Seattle, marijuana stores in Washington State can sell marijuana in cookies, brownies, and other approved baked goods, but cannot put the drug in candies, lollipops, or food items that might appeal to children, according to newly uh, released rules. So it's prohibited in products, uh, in any products packaged and designed especially appealing to children, including lollipop suckers, gummy candies, and jelly beans. So I, I, I don't see how, personally myself, I don't see how a gummy candy is any different than a brownie a brownie is just appealing to a child is that it should just be in the packaging and you know it's up to the the people who buy this to keep it away from well their kids. i want to ask you guys a question how many people had grandmas that had hard candies in their purse oh yeah I mean, sh- that's like everybody so how are you gonna say hard candies are for are for little kids and hard candies are a choking hazard exactly not only that let me ask this what in tarnations, <laughs> that's the word for the day, are children doing in a pot shop? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the mystery. Look look at some of the characters and designs on your alcohol bottles. I rest my case. All right. Well, we're going on a break right now, and we'll be back with more news from the region. The Vaughn Dank Group offers turnkey solutions for all your cannabis needs, bringing transparency and responsibility to a young budding industry. Helping patients by producing the cleanest, safest, and most potent medicines and infusibles possible. The Von Dank Group is a design, management, and consulting corporation with over 30 years of industry experience and knowledge of the dispensary, edibles, infusible kitchen, and large-scale cultivation of cannabis manufacturing facilities. Let the Von Dank Group help you grow your cannabis business from seed to green. www.vondank.com Cannabis has been used as a healing medicine for over 5,000 years with no toxic side effects. Is it right for you? The professionals at Dr. Reefer are here to help. Now accepting new patients, make an appointment today at 428-0000. Bring your medical records, or if you don't have them, their staff will work to document your qualifying condition with a 99% approval rate. If you have any of the following conditions, cancer, AIDS, muscle spasm diseases, severe nausea, severe pain, Crohn's disease, glaucoma, or PTSD, call Dr. Reefer today for your free consultation and their money-back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Call 702-428-0000 to get your Nevada medical marijuana card today. They said it would never happen. They were wrong. Las Vegas Hemp Fest is here. October 4th. All ages with live performances by Burner. I party like a rock star. Let the Benz fish tail all out the window. I got it off a of fish scale. Cypress Hill Sin Dog. <laughs> Marlon Asher, also playing New Kingston. Potluck, a surprise performance from the LBC. And 25 more rap and reggae artists, speakers, and comics. Tickets available at Painless Wayne's Tattoo Shop and at the LasVegasHempFest.com. October 4th, the Las Vegas Hemp Fest. Brought to you by Dr. Reefer. Welcome back, everybody. And this is well, a weekend Nevada cannabis news. Joining me in the house is Raymond Fletcher. Kurt Dukoch, Hawaiian Brian from Las Vegas Normal, and William Beach Baker. So back to the regional news. Raymond, you got something about Washington. High taxes may slow marijuana revenue. Stores opened in this month in Washington State, but high ta- high state and local taxes and a uh, paucity of storefront licenses means revenue could be minimal. 
Well, you know that has been um, that has been inhibited a lot of people in Colorado. Um, I'm a medical patient in Nevada, but I'm not a medical patient in Colorado. I go to Colorado and my bill looks crazy. And I'm like, how much did I get for this much? It's, but, but you know, like you're in a candy store. I mean, a kid in a candy store and you're like, I want this. I want this. I want this. And then you see the bill and go, wait a minute. That this feels kind of light for that. <laughs> but the medical patients pay much, much less and they get better quality. And I know that to be true. I think that's a system we should look at in Nevada here to begin with and then go to an equal footing because the argument has been medical marijuana. So we want to make sure that we, I mean, at the end of the day, I care less what, what anybody chooses to put in their own body. But, I mean, we're focused on medical and we're legal for medical. Mm -hmm. So I think that yeah. that should be the focus for now. Mm -hmm. So another news, we got a uh, marijuana decriminalization takes effect in the nation's capital. So Washington, D.C., huh? Mm -hmm. As of midnight last Wednesday, D.C.'s marijuana, marijuana decriminalization law is officially in effect. <laughs> the new law approved by the D.C. Council signed by Mayor Gray. Mayor Vincent Gray, uh, Mayor Vincent Gray submitted to Congress for a 60 day review replaces misdemeanor criminal charges for possession of up to one ounce of marijuana with a civil violation, costing the offender twenty five dollars. You know, what's hilarious about that is a ticket for littering in Washington, D.C. costs more than twenty five bucks. So if you have your bag of weed and a cop rolls up on you, don't throw it. Oh yeah, don't throw. That's it. right. <laughs> hey, throw it. Throw it at me. Okay. And then that's right. And that's <laughs> even if you're not a patient. That's that's for everybody Every, in anyone. that state. Exactly. So I mean, so no more running from the cops, guys. You know, if they find it on you, they find it on you. It's just a tiny little ticket. Well, it's not the running that's going to cost you. It's throwing it on the ground and littering. Oh littering. yeah. Then, then do you get another hundred dollar <laughs> ticket when you do that? Probably. <laughs> littering and now you're twenty five dollars. Littering and. <laughs> Smoking the reefer. <laughs> House approves amendment to help marijuana businesses. And we've been talking a lot about this. The U.S. House of Representatives approved an amendment Wednesday that will facilitate marijuana businesses in working with the banking institutions. The International Business Times reports the Heck Amendment, named after sponsor Danny Heck, not... Not Joe. Thank you was approved by a vote of 231 yay to 192 of those that have not seen the light or refuse to acknowledge the truth the amendment effectively blocks the sec and treasury department from penalizing banks who lend money to legitimate marijuana businesses in areas where they can legally do business well, that's great news. Um, on next to the city of brotherly love, um, not so brotherly love, 264 people have been charged with marijuana possession since city council voted to de uh, decriminalize uh, marijuana in Philadelphia. On June 19th, the Philadelphia City Council voted to decriminalize the possession for up to one ounce of marijuana, passing a bill introduced by Councilman Jim Keary. But Mayor Michael Nutter He's a nutter. Um, <laughs> opposes the bill and the police commissioner, Charles Ramsey, up your, you know, it, uh, has said that he'll continue to make marijuana arrest, even though the bill has been signed into law. In the month that follows the bill's passing, 264 citizens have been charged with the crime. That sounds like they're targeting people, but not only does it sound like they're targeting people, but 80%, 83% of those people that were arrested for mar uh, marijuana possession in Philadelphia in 2013 were black, suggesting that blacks are being disproportionately targeted. Where's Al Sharpton on that one? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Does Al Sharpton speak out in the city of brotherly love? Or he's East Coast, isn't he? Largely. Uh, uh, that is on the East. I know. That's what I'm saying. Where is he? He's out of New York, but I think he's too busy being an FBI informant. <laughs> oh, there he go. There he go. You didn't say that. <laughs> My bad. I'll behave. <laughs> Here's an interesting article. Uh, the front page of the New York Times calls marijuana the next gold rush. <laughs> Really? 
Yeah, exactly. They're finally learning. Ten or even five years ago, you wouldn't find the subject of marijuana even on the back pages of the New York Times, and now it's on the front cover. Um, they're they're uh, citing things like cannabis conferences, and the article notes are happening almost every week in Denver, and every day at more and more industry meetings and pitches are being heard all over the city. Um, according to the New York Times, 11,289 people in Colorado are now licensed to work in the marijuana industry. 11,000? 11,000. Damn. That number awesome. just shy of the state's auto mechanics so they almost have more people in the awesome. weed industry than people running their cars so wow yeah so uh, they say the new york times green says truly is becoming a new gold and gold uh and like gold marijuana is supplying jobs to the people willing to risk everything they have on the next big thing hallelujah times are a changing man i love hearing that kind of news it just <laughs> well, excites me well, I've been saying, you know, that um, cannabis is our generation's industrial revolution, our generation's technological revolution. It's what's going to create jobs mm -hmm. and including all the ancillary businesses exactly. that we met at Champs. Think of how many of those kind of businesses could open up and create jobs in our community. With the ancillary businesses, that, that 11,000 number has got to double or triple easily with people. Yeah, hey, I've met some cops. Money that are now working in the marijuana security industry. Yeah, and I DEA, believe you. X -DEA These are is policemen. <laughs> so. I, I believe you because I, for years I worked with animal control officers. They saw me at the booth at First Friday and he's like, come here, come here. And I come over there and he goes, you need any security for any of these places? <laughs> he goes, you know, you know I'll work for you. And I'm like, Psh. Man, when I have, you know, animal control officers, I have police officers tell me that they want to come over to our side. I'm like, heck yeah. No, it's awesome. And they were, they, I saw them, they were all like dressed in black looking like, you know, G.I. Joe. And I was like, you guys, are you guys like the black water of the weed community? They're like, <laughs> oh, they started laughing. I said, I call them weed water. So, <laughs> and these guys, they look like some, they'll rip your neck off kind of dudes, like military guys. And it's Maybe well, some will need. I don't well, know. Speaking of weed water, um, I was just wondering, has anybody heard about the Monsanto link to River Rock in Colorado? Um, I, I don't know. Is it just like, is it a, well, I don't know. I heard that, okay, I heard that this person did work for Monsanto, and then now they work for River Rock, and I'm not really sure it's a true Monsanto and, and GMO weed kind of situation, but that's the rumors that are out there. Well, right I'm, now, what I know with River Rock, they're going through a lot of... Uh, instability within that company right now so who sure. knows what's going on and what's going through the rumor mill yeah we probably want to wait to see the, when the smoke settles down see what happens but if they are in the game it's not good news for any of us if monsanto is in the game that's true so we're we're going to be keeping an eye on this and see what shakes out from that from that play um and we're going to move on to like florida news now Florida News, backers of a ballot initiative that would legalize wider use of medical marijuana in Florida are working to assuage some voters' concerns before November election about how the drug would be regulated. A newly formed group called Florida for Care is planning to draft a proposal, um, proposed rules about how medical marijuana will be managed if voters approve a con, uh, constitutional amendment making it legal for use, for state's use. So Florida has got, has got plans in the works. Florida has got plans on the works. Yeah, I met a lot of people from Florida at the Champ Show and they were all like, uh, wishing that they were where we were right now. They're the CBD only. That's the CBD only one, right? The I believe Florida? like Utah, uh, like maybe Florida, New Jersey. There, there are a couple of CBD only states, and I know Utah is definitely one of them because I think that just CBDs alone really don't heal you uh, in the way that, that's needed. Um, that's just my belief, though. Um, all right, we have Less. one. We have one quick, quick story from around the world. We have Spain. Well, the uh, well, the U.S. as officials and media continue to pretend to like pot legalization is un unprecedented, far-fetched dream. In Spain, personal marijuana has been legal for decades. So, there you go. Thank you, Spain. Well, hopefully, we will see our friends on Saturday at 4 p.m. You can get all the information on our weekend 702 website or Facebook page. Yes. Yes, um, not only that, we have First Friday coming up the week after next, and we have our patients' first um, meeting the week the after Saturday. that. So everybody, until then, keep safe and one love, and we'll see you next week. See you next week.